next on Blue Echo Radio, Cinema Bazaar with Ashton Helton. And now we're recording my actual show that I will be posting later for the Hickory Haunts Takeover, which is coming in the next few minutes. And for those of you listening in the first time, I usually do a segment around this time called my feature presentation, wherein I review a particular film that fits the theme of that week's show. But because this week is an opening show and I'm doing a full Lake Hickory Haunts takeover, I won't be offering a review. However, this is also the first week of October, so I want you to let you know about some awesome events coming up. The Asheville Film Society and Grail Movie House will be screening classic horror movies all month long tonight. And I'm going to be there, so you have to go, and you have to say hi. There's a Todd Browning double feature of The Unholy Three and The Unknown, which I thought was interesting. I thought originally, I, I just heard Todd Browning double feature, and I assumed it would be Dracula and Freaks, mm-hmm. or at least one of those, like a headliner and then one of his lesser knowns. But no, they're both, uh, it's a Lon Chaney double feature, and it looks really interesting. And it's with the Asheville Film Society, so go support the grail tip really well but not as well as you would be if I was working there and (laughs) enjoy it it's gonna be a lot of fun and we also just started carrying brownies yesterday so you can have a Todd Brownie while you watch a film by Todd Browning that's amazing I'm hilarious you guys thank you Thank you. This is exactly what I need. Just constant validation about how hilarious constant I am. Constant credibility. Thank you. And and no, they're not the special brownies. They're not, I, but we, yeah. things can be arranged. Like, don't knock it off so fast. This is a Cinema Bazaar episode. You will get official Cinema Bazaar special brownie merchandise if you go. Nice. That's not true at all. <laughs> but stranger things have happened. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> that was, yeah, that was that nice. That was good. Yeah, that, was that was good. Was, that was a very well put together thing. I see Army of Darkness on this screen. Yes. Screening. Also this week, Army of Darkness is happening on Friday. We have screened that one before. We're going to screen it again because everybody loves it. And we're going to screen it this Friday at the Grail. I believe that one is also with uh, the Asheville Film Society. So come check out both of these awesome things and watch awesome movies. And then, except Josh can't go because we're working. Oh, All of us are working, but you should I'm go. Badass. You listening? And you're good at. <laughs> you're getting a little too shoes. Oh my god! I love that movie. I can't help I, it. I I love it too. I'm watching it tonight as soon as I get home. Yeah, no, watch no, it tonight yes. to make up for the Grail. I will have to. And all of you who aren't working, watch it. And then once you leave, go to Lake Hickory Haunts. Ooh, ooh. Or go to Lake Hickory Haunts on Saturday and make a whole weekend out of it. Perfect. It's spooky month after all. Yeah, might as well. So on next week's schedule, we have no word. But on the 17th, they are showing The Exorcist. And Halloween will be the big budget night. We are showing John Carpenter's original Halloween on Halloween. Isn't that clever? It's oh. very nice. So, well, do you will they ever show like the director's cut of The Exorcist? Uh, I don't that know. That thing because is we're not so much better than the original. Uh, I know. Uh, Exorcist. I mean, when they let the director's cut out, and I watched that, I was like, "Whoa, that actually scared me." Mm-hmm. I I love the director's cut. I own it, but I'm not I'm not sure which version we're screening at the Grail because it's not the Grail picking. It's uh, Asheville Film Society. All the Tuesday horror picture show stuff. That's them. We do have some awesome reoccurring events, including The Room. (laughs) Oh, words cannot describe how much I love Tommy Wiseau. Was that Wiseau? Is it his birthday today? (gasps) Was it? Holy shit. Oh, Oh happy birthday, Tommy, who's definitely listening. The love of my life. (laughs) God. I dedicate this episode of Cinema Bazaar to Tommy Wiseau just for existing. If you do go to the I want to buy his underwear. God, yeah. You know, if you buy a copy <laughs> yeah, of the movie, you get you don't get the underwear, oh, but shit. you get like a little poster and like a coupon for the underwear. Oh my I'm... God, what am I doing? You know what else you get? Please. Apparently, if you buy a copy of the movie and only a copy of the movie, like a fucking mini poster and a backpack and tons He's of other stuff. Like he just man. hooks you up. I just love him. Because I have a friend that uh, bought bought something from his website. He bought like the DVD and he gave him just so much free stuff. There's a... And, have you played... Sorry, I cut you off. No, you're fine. Okay, so 
Do you know there's a room video game? I do not know that there's Megan a room video game. Megan and I played game. the room video game. When you go home, please play the room video game. It is, it's like, what was it on? Do you remember? It's on like some free, like, it's it was free. I didn't have to pay anything for it. Is it like and a it's flash like an eight game bit. Or? Yeah, it's a flash game. It's like an eight bit flash game of the room. Good. It is the most Perfect. beautiful thing I've ever seen in my entire life. I could talk for years about the room and be okay. <laughs> I know I'm being quiet, but I didn't think I could really top. I want to buy his nut sweat, you know, underwear kind of thing. So mm-hmm. I was like, no, nah, just stay quiet. <laughs> hey, mommy, why are they talking about nut sweat? <laughs> See, not right. He knows every. You, you know so many voices. <laughs> yes, you have no idea. I've, I've said it for years. You, there's so many voices inside my head. It's just. I, and you I, can get them all in command. Yeah, just whenever <laughs> I want them, it's they just come out. It, it, it's really weird. <laughs> I don't Boston. see. I have no idea where. I have no idea where I store <laughs> all this shit. I really don't. I go to the bar. I don't even forget. I could drink all night long and I never forget them. Okay, now I, Malice's voice. No, who's Malice? Me. Oh, you. Oh, your voice. Oh man, it's like Columbia, right? <laughs> that uh, I. Have, it's similar to Columbia. I can't, I, What's she sound like? What do I sound like to other people? What do I sound like? To, I can't. <laughs> what do, do you it, say to me? What do I mean? like? Something about nightmares. What do you? You go, uh, nightmares. I just say nightmares. nightmares. Yeah, yeah, yeah nightmares. Good. nightmares. That's what I'm like. Oh, I get a lot of like, where are you from? When I do that, when I do her voice, because people don't understand acting. <laughs> uh, you from around here? You ain't from around here, are you? Oh, uh, you sound like you from Long Island. <laughs> like, no, that's Boston. And <laughs> I did have somebody, they kept saying, where are you from? Where are you from? I was like, where do you think I'm from? He's like, what part of New York are you from? I was like, Jay-Z. okay. <laughs> but when people ask, I usually say, from your nightmares. <laughs> there you go, Perfect. from your nightmares. There you go. Perfect. Now that I've played it, I can probably do it a little that's bit. That's not what she said. Like it <laughs> well, my voice is still off. I, I'm, I'm, You're fine. I've rested it for you can three do, days. You can do like 999 voices, but Malice's voice is entirely my own. I, I'll, I'll, I'll bet you by the end of next weekend I'll have her voice. Nope. Mm-hmm. It's because she's like a hybrid because I don't do a specific accent. I just do a really like deep like dramatization. That's a word probably. Yes, I just super, super make fun of my own voice. I feel that. Uh, because I have a really strange speech pattern as it is, and I just exaggerate that to the core, and that's what she sounds like. it sounds like. awesome. And it comes, fr- it's yeah. a little bit Canadian. I'm a fan. <laughs> yeah, it's you, a little bit Wisconsin, a little Boston. There you go. That, uh, I was, that, when I actually first heard it, I, was, uh, I thought it was from Wisconsin. And then you said Boston, because somebody asked you and said, I, doesn't that sound like Jersey? And I'm just sitting there. I don't want to say anything that sounds stupid. <laughs> no, it's not. I'm not trying to imitate any specific accent. I'm just exaggerating my own weird as hell speech pattern because my weird as hell speech pattern is a hybrid Wisconsin and Southern accent. <laughs> so that's what I'm working with in case you guys were wondering. I I'm just I just really like Alice. that in the sound effects box, there's chick moan. Ooh. Um, can Where we is click she? That? We can I just want to hear We can it. click that today. Oh, disappointing. The chick moan doesn't work. What oh. The... Thank you. Okay. It works. Oh, yeah, we have. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> we do, why do we need sound yeah, we effects? we don't even need it. We can <laughs> Wait just, a second. Like, tell you. I think that, hold on. I don't think that we would hear it in the playback. I oh, think so we would just... hear it if we were on okay. air. How many times But we're not on air. Like four. <laughs> so, uh, lovely viewers and listeners to Sorry. Cinema Bazaar Radio Show, if you will call... And let us know if you just heard like an array of moans. <laughs> well, this will give me. I a, would appreciate a, a it. chance to say, "Hey, my my daughter Alyssa King and oh, a yeah. friend of mine Michelle Coley, yeah, she, she she sent me. They sent me a message saying, I better get a shout out. Well, call the damn station then if you want a shout out and let us know if you just heard a moan other than mine. <laughs> yeah, switching gears. <laughs> yes, what a segue. Two, the actors that I brought on to the show. <laughs> I date prisoners. Yeah, I love hey, prison. That, that, oh, hey, oh, you got a, that, you got a call. Ah, we have a hello call. from Hickory. Yay. Hey, it's my daughter. Is it your daughter? I be- hello. You're on Cinema Bazaar. Uh, hi. <laughs> Is that your daughter? Alyssa? Hi. Hey. What's up? <laughs> hello. Oh, I can hear the I can hear it going back. Oh, is that feedback from you? No, it's... I'm proud of you. Oh, you're proud of me. I I love you, sweetie. sweet. I'm proud of you, too, darling. Aw. I love you. This is a family. 
listen to you. So. Do what? I couldn't hear you. You're going to eat something and listen to us. No. I'm gonna be a dork and listen to it. Oh, be a dork. That's not dorky. Hey, dorks That's not dorky are good. at all. This is the best show on Blue. It's pretty Apple. rad. Dorks Probably are the- not. Not even like top five. But it's okay. <laughs> I like it. It's the best show I've ever had. So, all right. Well, thank you for calling, sweetheart. Yeah. I love you, and thank you for listening. Thanks for calling. Thank you. I miss you. Yeah. I want. I want to. You. You better Facetime me tonight. See. I will. Okay. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> Nothing like horror to bring a family together. Yeah. <laughs> That's what this show is really about. <laughs> it's about the things that matter the most. Well, she exactly. came, She actually came through the haunt this past weekend. <gasps> Did she oh, like yeah, it? Yeah, yeah she she, she said she loved it. Awesome. Uh, she, she got three scared. She got scared three different times. Mm-hmm. But she was like, uh, it was more just like slight jump scares because you've been scaring me my whole <laughs> life. <laughs> and, She's like used to it now. Well, uh, yeah, I'm She's that, I'm that dad that, <laughs> that, you know, I, uh, she'll go to the bathroom or, or she'll, she'll go upstairs to her room and when she comes back down I'm hiding somewhere and I'll, I'll jump out at her and Same. so she, she's gotten used to I it do that to my dog um, and my cat so I feel like my cat does that to me like he'll just be outside the door when I open it and it's not like really a scare but it's like I'll trip over him a lot and I feel like it can't oh, be no. unintentional like multiple times a week so switching gears to Bringing in the Lake Hickory Haunts takeover. Uh, I ha- How this is going to work is I have 11 shared questions among the two of you, and then I have individual questions, scary. and we'll do the shared questions. That's, that's the horror scary show. part. <laughs> that's, that's what we're afraid of. So this is homework. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll do the shared, and then we'll just alternate between you two for the not shared. Sweet. Okay, so first of all, we talked a little bit, I introduced you at the beginning of the show, but would you mind introducing your character for the podcast that I'm going to make out of this and for just in your own words? Who do you want to go first? Uh, ladies first. Okay. Always. Because you're texting. Hello. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm just um, kidding. I was asking my mom if she was actually listening to this. Character. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, that thing. Um, More well, family shit. my character's name is Lilith Cronin. Um, she actually has a pretty crazy backstory to fit her crazy personality. Um, She was born into a wealthy family. Um, Then all of a sudden, she started distancing herself from her family, and all of the pets they used to have turned up missing. Um, Eventually, their family saw her scurrying away um, into the woods, and they followed her out there, and they saw her gutting a cat open, um so then they were like okay so we can't have this in our wealthy family so like we're gonna send her send her away so they sent her away she's in an asylum um she has a mask on because she likes to bite people casual (laughs) um and then she just wanted to break out so what she did she um exploded an oven um which distorted half of her face on the inside of her mask uh, so she she didn't have anywhere else to go. So she was just wandering around until she turned up to Lake Hickory Haunts. Um, and then Dr. Death took her in, uh, gave her a new Man. set of wide eyes. Oh, and uh, there she is. She just hangs out in the asylum. And some nights you can still see her break free and wander around the midway. Oh, some nights. <laughs> <laughs> Every night. <laughs> awesome. That's her. That's my girl. Thank you. And Joshua, do you want to take the floor? And- I'm going to judge you on this, Joshua. Where am I oh, taking the floor? Yeah. Uh, introducing your character. Oh, my Pick God. Pick it up. And you there you go. such a dad show. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I couldn't help it. Uh, you know, I am a dad. Uh, well, my character is the mad scientist, the mad professor, actually, I, I like to call him. Uh, they, started, uh, they started me out. I thought I was going to be a pirate. And, yes, that and, is true. And so I spent two weeks researching pirates. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> <laughs> and then on the day I, they we come in for a rehearsal, Allie's like, "Surprise! Oh, guess what? You're going to be the mad professor." I'm like, "Okay." <laughs> and, he did amazing with it though. So, but uh, basically, the mad professor is uh, he's a scientist that works for the government, the military, and uh, uh, and. A UFO crash landed near his site, uh, near his you know scientific building, the or extinction, and 
so the the government, of course, went out there and and, and got the the aliens out and and had him since he was a, a pretty much their top biological scientist to go in and you know do autopsies and uh, and, and experimentation you know to figure out if you know what kind of beings these actually are, and then uh, Kaluith came in. Uh, came to get his uh, fallen comrades, basically. Uh, and Kaluith is, I believe, a general for K- uh, Cthulhu, because Cthulhu is the the main master, or whatever. <coughs> Kaluith is the main guy, but uh, continue. Oh, is it really? Yes. I, got the, I, I could have sworn, like, from, from lore that Cthulhu was, like, the Probably, but the big LA badass he haunts, he's the He's the big one, but I mean... Oh, like... okay. I, I'm... <laughs> I'm sorry, we master. Care. We only care about Kluith. <laughs> so Kluith, okay. So since we only care about Kluith, he came in uh, swinging his <laughs> Mimi know. big boy. <laughs> <laughs> he, he came. He came in, uh, you know, dick swinging, and uh, and said, you know what? I, I want my my people back, and and since you're the one work, you know, doing these experiments. I'm going to brainwash your ass, and you're going to work for me. Perfect. And and Ideal. So basically, my job is to bring in the cattle, <laughs> and and we turn them into hybrid human alien, uh, you know, experiments. And and you will see those if you come through my extinction. I, I like to say my extinction, but it's actually clueless extinction. Hmm. But you know. Um, but yeah, it's uh, his. He's been brainwashed, so he, he can't even remember anything that happened before he met the love of his life, Kaluith. I because, ship it. Yes, he is infatuated with Kaluith. You and guys should get BFF necklaces. Aww, <laughs> that would be really cute. <laughs> that would be kind of awesome. I could, I could, I could, I could actually ask I people. Love that. You want me to make a necklace out of your bones? <laughs> <laughs> you should do Perfect. it. Perfect. I love it. So I'm just going to take a quick second to introduce my character. I was about to say, you better do yours. This is about you guys, but this is one of the ones that I can actually answer and get you guys excited for the season at Lake Hickory Hunt. So my character's name is Malice. Uh, She's going to come in this weekend with a new addition. She's going to have a saw blade eye and a UV reactive eye. So that when you're in the dark out there with me, my eye will be glowing at you. Just one, though. I love it. And she is kind of along the same vein. She is absolutely in love and infatuated with Dr. Death because she was dead. And he Frankensteined her little ass back together again. <laughs> and now uh, that's I'm the first character that you encounter before you go into the haunt. I, I bring in the tickets. It's a lie. My victims. I just could not help. I and I just she's so excitable and so like happy because whenever new people come in, that's new victims for Doctor Death. So she likes to go through the audience or go through the lines and sort of poke and prod. Not actually touch, but, you know, <laughs> you know, disclaimer. <laughs> but she likes to tease people and likes to kind of build her own perfect victim out of the audience. And she's very funny and she's very excited whenever new victims come in. And whenever the doors open, she gets a glimpse of Dr. Death. She gets really out of hand sometimes. Hot so she's, and bothered. She's a little nuts. She's a little... Hot and bothered is an understatement. <laughs> she can't really get hot because she's... Yeah. Cold. Oh, you're right. <laughs> you're right. She's a cold body, but it's all right. Cold um, and bothered. Cold and bothered <laughs> is my description. It's how I would describe my personality. Same. Cold and bothered. I love it. That's my new bio. I love it so much. So come see us. Come see us all. And uh, yeah, enjoy. Uh, this is another shared question. Then I'll go into the inner the individual ones. How did you go about building the character and backstory? Uh, I'll have Joshua go first this time, and you sort of talked about it already. But if you want to expand, my mother any. is so aggravating. I'm sorry, <laughs> ma. Oh. <laughs> my, um, uh, t- if you would like to call and sort of <laughs> give a rebuttal, drag him. <laughs> no, it's your call. mother. For God's sake, uh, and, and, and she, she is just as honest to me. She'll tell me when I'm an asshole. So <laughs> it, it works. I'm just teasing. But no, I, I tell her. I, I tell her yesterday. I'm going to be on the radio, Mom. It's going to be internet radio. She and she's oh, okay, good. And I send it to her messenger. I show her it. Then your messenger. Okay, I'm. I'm going to listen. I just text her and say, Are you listening? She's like, To what? <laughs> I'm like to me, <laughs> to me, and she's like, oh, uh, she's like uh, I'm like I'm on the radio. She's like, what station? <laughs> I don't use internet radio, mom. <laughs> it's 
it's not a tune in station. Out of touch. Me well, too, I, I, I love you, Mom, if you, if you did finally get in here and, and you're listening to me now. I love you. <laughs> Mama, if you're out there and you want to drag him, I will repeat that number. <laughs> uh, so, okay, so what was your question? How did uh, I go about building the character? And the backstory. Uh, basically just research. I, you know, I researched uh, a few mad scientists like, you know, Doc Brown. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's where kind of his humor comes from. I do, I do put a little humor into it uh, when, when the customers want to interact with me and quite a few of them try to talk to me and, and get things out of me. And, uh, but, you know, just the icons like, you know, Frankenstein and uh, uh, those kind of... He, basically, I looked at also <coughs> psychopaths that are from a scientific era that kind of became cannibals. Mm. And, uh, but when it came down to it, Dr. Frankenstein was pretty much a lot of inspiration there. Um, because he's out of his mind. He's so passionate about what he's doing, but he, ha- he hasn't been brainwashed. He brainwashed himself basically. Yeah. But, um, that's what I love about you, Josh, is cause like, I said, go research, do some research about characters. And some people are like, yeah, okay, I'll do it. And then they don't do anything. But he got so into it. Like, it makes me so psyched hearing stuff like that. Like, it's awesome. Well, I mean, if you're going to do it, you might as well do it right. Yeah, and, and it's like, it's not like it's a boring thing to do. Like, that's fun. Oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or I mean, to me, it's you're building fun. a monster. Yeah, exactly. I can't think of something more exciting right? to do. And uh, even even Allie said it. She's like, I looked at you and 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 said, you're the mad professor, and Mm -hmm. and it 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 just it kind of just clicked. I mean, it uh, he is inside of me, and (laughs) yes, I'm I'm almost afraid to see what else is inside of me. Entire radio. (laughs) But uh, yeah, they just uh, it came through the research. Uh, The more I read, and the more I uh, you know thought about it, and. I mean, I'd like to meditate too, so I, I meditate on it. And he just came. He just uh, he evolved. <laughs> that reminds slowly. me. I was like getting ready, and they were like, "You know, Josh is Josh is over there meditating." And I was like, "What?" And I look over there. He's just chilling. I'm like, "Huh?" I know. I, I walk in circles because it like makes me feel crazy. That's how I get pumped. And I look over, and I like I like jumping around and like listening to music. And then he's just over there meditating, like peacing out. And I'm like, "Wow." <laughs> Like it's cool. Like I'm, I haven't seen that before. Well, yeah, it it kind of started as just me by myself and everybody. Uh, <laughs> uh, you and I, and Doctor yeah, Death came over and <laughs> I thought you were like sad. Or <laughs> or something. Are, are you depressed? <laughs> are you okay? And I, you know, I was just uh, no, I'm meditating. And now we I we have a circle of people that meditate with me now. Yeah, that's and, awesome. And it's pretty cool. Uh, for for me, the the mad the mad professor is so energetic mm-hmm. that. Uh, I have to be calm before I start because I will wear myself out if I'm, you know, yeah. full on energy. Right. So so I have to, you know, that helps me calm down doing it for about 10, 15 minutes and I'm good to go. Uh, and, and I do it again, actually, while I'm down in extinction and I'm standing there waiting on a new group. I'll actually regroup myself and, and try to calm down because I run a lot. <laughs> I'm running up and down that hallway like a sprinter. <laughs> I think I'm sw- somewhere in the middle. I like to, uh, so I am in love with a character named Dr. Death, who's played by another actor, like Hickory Hunts. And beforehand, I am just all over that boy. Like, if he leaves for like five minutes, I'm like, where is my man? <laughs> Did you guys see him? And like, I'll, sometimes we like, we do stuff in the, during the parade together like he'll carry me or like i'll be chasing after him but if we get separated somehow i am like nuts looking for him <laughs> i just go crazy I and i start that. like asking customers like where are, where's my mans have you seen him <laughs> he has a hacksaw have you seen him? <laughs> so That's awesome uh how do you go about building your character and um the backstory okay uh well lilith's like three years old now um when i first got well, told you look great thanks <laughs> thanks man <laughs> <laughs> when i first got told i was going to be in there I, w- I went to an audition for lake hickory haunts and i did my little ditty and uh they were like hey you're in an asylum you'll play like a crazy person i'm like oh, okay cool but um I-, I just started thinking i was like cool like what's a really cool name and then i was like really into supernatural then and i'm like well this sounds pretty badass like i'll do that she sounds pretty edgy 
And I was like, okay, what's a random last name that's like Latinish? And I was like, Cronin, let's do this. <laughs> and then, like, I get inspiration from Hannibal Lecter, is my favorite. Oh, God. Absolutely. Yeah absolutely one of my favorites and I was like I need a mask like I, I want a mask how cool is that like how creepy so I got a mask and I got a straight jacket and then I just built up her backstory and how she came there and everything and it helped me develop my character and made me fall in love with Lilith so Aww. yeah I, I know that uh, that my my backstory is a little bit less because I know hers is in just super detailed. <laughs> I mean, it really is. She is very detailed on everything she does. And with mine, I kind of left it open ended as far as going back because he is brainwashed. And mm -hmm. I th I think that helped me stay in the moment because I improv so much yeah. right. with these people that if if I'm if I'm sitting here trying to remember. Okay, he went to college at yeah. Yale, and it, it kind of throws me off <laughs> oh, a little yeah. bit. But, but yeah, you, you guys got to come see Lilith. She is, <laughs> she will creep you the hell out. Thanks. Like I tell you. <laughs> it's awesome. So I'm gonna go into the first of the individual questions now. Who wants it? Ladies first, of course. Ladies first, sure. then. Let's do this. So being in the midway means that you have a lot of direct contact with guests, oh, sure. and you're doing a lot of improv. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about that as an actor? I absolutely love improv. It stresses a lot of people out, but, like, for me, if I'm doing Lilith, that is, <laughs> it flows and comes, like, supernatural. Like, I mean, you just, like, there's nothing easier than being an insane person. Like, you do anything, and it's justified because you're insane. So, like, I'm over here, I'm, like, crawling on tables, like, it's fine, I'm crazy. Or, like, I literally roll on the ground sometimes and jump on random things, and it's, yeah, I, that's, I love improv, and I love interacting with people, and the different interactions and conversations I have with people as Lilith is just, like, priceless, <laughs> like, it's insane. I talk to people about my snake and my python, because I have, like, a skeleton snake, and I'm like, I bet mine's bigger than yours, and all this other <laughs> stuff, like... It's so easy, and it just comes so natural once you get the hang of it and your character and everything. It just flows. Her python is a euphemism. Yes. <laughs> you're correct. <laughs> I thought you said you're erect. I like, oh, no, I should have said like, that. Like, oopsie. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, would you look at that? <laughs> My apologies. <laughs> so this is another shared question going back to those because there's much more of those. Have you ever portrayed different characters or other versions of your current character? You said Lilith is like three years old. Maybe mm -hmm. there's like been a different version of her. Oh, or like yeah. a different character. Yeah, every year there's like a different splice of Lilith. Like the beginning, it was more, I have the mask. I'm like, well, I don't need to talk if I'm wearing a mask. I'll just scream. So I didn't talk to anyone. And then one night, Ryan, who's actually the owner of Lake Ukraine Haunts, he came up to me and he was like, hey, you're going to be on Midway. And I'm like, uh what? And I'm like, I don't know how to improv. I don't know how to do any of this. He was like, come up with it. You can do it. <laughs> okay. okay. It's back. <laughs> it's Actually spooky. Both of you. <laughs> Just panic. Um, Sorry to interrupt. Oh, no, you're good. Um, so, like, at first I was just like a random little thing. I didn't talk to anyone. I was just there for pictures and looking creepy. And then Ryan was like, hey, can you like talk more? <laughs> can you actually like do something and talk? And I was like, yeah, I can try. And I did it. And then she just talked more. And then the next year she was more like playful and fun. And she's a little bit like she just scares in the midway. And then all of a sudden, like that's her jazz. And then now this year it's more focused on being scary and edgy and creepy and still, I still do a lot of fun stuff. Like, if there's kids over there, like, terrified to go through, I'll go play with them, like, give them a rock or something, like, something random. But um, every year, it's something different. Same with costume. My first year, I had, like, I made my own straight jacket. And then the next year, I bought one online. It ripped everywhere, but it was fun. And then this year, I made a completely different look. Every year, just something changes oh, with yeah. her. I love her, like, punk rock yeah. get-up. I have She's a soft edgy. spot in my heart for punk girls. Oh, yeah. I love being punk. This is not a secret. <laughs> <laughs> and over to Joshua. To me, uh, actually, this is my first time playing anything horror related. Nice. I've always really? always done drama and comedy, cool. mostly comedy. Um, but yeah, I, I wanted to switch gears. I was like, I want to do so. I even told Allie, I was yeah, like, I want to play a psychopath. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you know, I, I want to get this crazy out of me. <laughs> and it's funny because my friend Michelle, she, she just said, cause you're a crazy ass. And, and I'm like, yeah, that's, 
that's pretty much me. And um, but no, I've always wanted to do this, and 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 like I say, he just came out. But I, I'm definitely looking to evolve him throughout the season, and uh, I'm I'm hoping I'll be back next year, and and he'll be even further evolved. But uh, I think I'm in a sweet spot right now with him, and I don't I don't have to change much because the the customers seem to enjoy him, and uh, I mean I've had had people. <laughs> This one guy, he's like, can you do an experimentation to make my dick bigger? <laughs> and I was like, oh my and, and God. without missing a beat, I'm like, I'm sorry, but I don't do experiments on, vin- vi- on that. I can't even do it now on, on um, Vienna sausages. <laughs> And and his girlfriend laughed. He laughed, and he was like, "Man, that's messed up." And his girlfriend's like, "Ah, you hit the nail on the head with him, <laughs> didn't you?" And I was like, "Oh, that's wrong. Just move oh, on." That's yeah. awesome. But yeah, I've, I've they uh, they seem to enjoy interacting with me. Um, but I've been improving for a long time. Uh, that's <laughs> I, that's one of my favorite things to do. But no, I'm sorry. I was a very no. extended answer to that. No, question. it's awesome. So we're gonna move on to. I'm gonna. Keep it on you. I'm going to do a individual question. Okay. So being a part of a scene is a little different than being in the midway. How do you go about commanding your scene and giving customers the best experience possible in the brief time that they're passing through? Mm, that's a good question. Um, basically, like I, uh, like I said earlier, I look at extinction. I, I kind of made it mine. I took it over, and I didn't. I didn't. wasn't told to. <laughs> But um, I, I kind of f- feel like that that my character's been in that building for so long. It's his home, and and um, I, it, it is it's it's different because you have to interact with so many different people, and I, I usually have about maybe fifteen to thirty seconds, but you know, with the groups, right. because you know, I. I greet them as they come to my door, and then they have to see me again. They have to come through my door again to see me again. So uh, usually it's, you know, it's uh, w- once they're there, they are my new playthings, and I don't let them leave until they know that, that they're my playthings, and I'm going to make them part of my my masterpiece. Hot. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I want your heart. <laughs> Bring me your heart. But uh, yeah, I, and I also I, I don't only do it like just for my area. I'll actually scream. I don't know if you guys have heard me, uh, but most of most of our other actors are like, dude, we can hear you all the way across the pond, man, because I'm screaming for more body parts and and because I want the car- the the customers as they're walking through. To be like, where the hell is this crazy fucker screaming <laughs> yeah. from? I mean, that's one of the things. If you hear something and you don't know where it's coming from, exactly. that could be coming up next. Mm-hmm. That could be twenty minutes from now. You don't know. Yep. Like it could be behind you. And and spacing, especially is, when you're in the woods. Yeah, the that's that's I can see them. I, I pretty much we have the perfect area. I can see them walking everywhere. I can basically to see where the customers are, and that helps helps with spacing too because you know sometimes they get bunched up and. I'll yell at them, move it along, cattle, you know, and, and they'll, they'll look up at me and, and then they can get scared by the people in their, that the, in the area that they're in because they're looking at, they're trying to find me. Right. And so it distracts them. It helps yeah. the other actors out. At least I hope so. I hope I'm not stepping on anyone's toes. But, uh, yeah, that's, you know, what's, I, I just let him go. <laughs> you know, he, <laughs> once, I, once this, the mad scientist has taken over, it's, he does what he wants. That's why I got cuts and scrapes and bruises all over me. <laughs> oh, I know. I got a. I stabbed myself. Uh, I like to go. I have like a little walkway, and I like. There's a metal sheet, and I like to pound it on the way down and pound it back on the way up. And I have this ring that I wear on my finger, and I went to pound it, and the ring just went mm. inside of my hand, kind of like wow. Jesus. Fun story. <laughs> one of my uh, straight jackets that I had, I had it pinned to stay together on one part. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so so I went to smack a wall to scare a guest. Ow. And um like I hit it 
And then all of a sudden, like, I screamed bloody murder. I was like, ah! but it works because it was fine with the scene. <laughs> and then, like, they walked through and I looked down and the entire pen was in a, in my hand, <sighs> inside of my hand. So I, like, ran to the person who was playing Granny at that time. And I was like, hey, can you pull this out of my hand? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, if I scream, it's fine. The customers will think, like, something's happening. <laughs> and then I, they, she pulled it out and it was, like, all the way in my hand. So that was a rad point. That was, that was a really cool one that happened to me. Well, that that just shows how, how good of an actor you are. You Thanks, know, man. You got hurt and you just stayed with it. Yeah, sure did. You, Never break a scene. Yeah, you gotta gotta keep going. I'll be like getting sawed in half for real, and I'll keep acting yeah. <laughs> as you die. <laughs> <laughs> My last breath will be some sort of one liner. <laughs> <laughs> so, moving on to the next shared question, we'll start with Allie this time. What is the most you've ever scared a person? Well, Ooh, at the haunt. That's a good one. Oh, man, there's been so many. Probably my favorite. Okay. So I, it was maybe last year. Um, I scared this one girl. Uh, she was talking to her boyfriend, just not even listening. And I went up behind of her, and I, I scared her somehow. I don't remember what exactly I did. She dropped to the ground, and then she just sat there for a few minutes. She was like, I just pissed my pants. She was like, <laughs> no, like I, for, I just pissed my pants. Sure enough, she... There she pooped. She pooped her. She peed her pants like right there, <laughs> and I was like, "Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry." I didn't break character. I was like, "Oh, sorry," and I just like ran away. <laughs> but that was probably one of my favorites. Anytime that, or when you like get a huge guy that's like not scared of anything, and they're just like buff, like sticking their chest out, like, "Come on, baby, let's go. We got this," <laughs> and you just scare them, and then they scream like a little girl. It's so sad. It's, it's the yeah. best feeling. Those in the are world. my favorites too. The <laughs> best feeling in the world is scaring someone. <laughs> Joshua, what's your best scare? Um, well, you know, the mad professor is, he, he does like numbers. So I keep a count of how many times I make someone scared. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's just part of the character. I can't help doing it. I don't, I don't know if it's part of me or part of the character. Who are you? That's why I don't <laughs> trust that you're a human being underneath all <laughs> uh, Yes, I'm, I am human. I bleed like you do. No. Mm, are you sure about that? Uh, do you have a belly button? <laughs> Yes, I have a belly button. It's <laughs> mine. Um, uh, but uh, the, I'll say the the second night was the the most scares I got. I got about four hundred and fifty scares. Damn. Yeah. They, basically, every group that come through there, and I count each end of if, if two people jump, that's two scares mm-hmm. to me. So every group that came through, I usually try to get three to four scares out of them, and with the way I'm set up, I can I can usually hit at least two. I mean, at least it, it, that's that's every group. So, and that I, well, when I say two scares, I mean I'll do three or four people in that group twice. Right. So I mean that can be four to six scares automatically. But uh, yeah, my favorite was one of those badasses that mm-hmm. came through. Those are the best ones. And my little hallway that I have. I use Michael Myers. I, like I said earlier, I, I walked down the hallway behind him. This guy didn't know I was anywhere near him. And I screamed as loud as I could fucking scream, slapped the wall hard, and he <laughs> and I said, I knew I could get you. You ain't going to get through here without that, that being scared. And he's like, oh, man, you're the, fir- you're the only person that's gotten me so far tonight. <laughs> and that made me happy and that validated what Ooh, I'm doing. <laughs> that reminds me of one another one I like. I like to contort and get on the ground and crawl after people. Oh, yeah. <sighs> it's the best thing because it freaks anything from the ground is going to freak people out. And I was contorting, and it was kind of like a dim hallway, and you couldn't really see it. And then there's this one guy who was he looked behind me, and he looked at me, and he was like, "What the hell is that? Go, go, go!" He's like pushing his girlfriend in front of him. <laughs> that was another really good one. That one made me laugh for like thirty minutes. I love. I'm. I have a front row seat to like people coming out, like they're chased out of the <laughs> of the haunt. I love when so there's great. like a couple, and there's like a macho <laughs> dude, and like you know the chick, she's like more scared. And then when they, like, that's at the beginning of the line. Mm-hmm. And then when they come out, like, an hour later, the dude is holding on to his, like, five foot three girlfriend with an iron grip. I love it. I, that's how I know that they so got good. their money's worth. Oh, um, my dirty friend. So I'm going to switch back over to Allie for another individual question. So Lilith gives several onstage performances throughout the night. And what's the best thing about being on stage? Oh, man. And if you want to talk about the special element of 
Lilith being on stage. Okay. I won't spoil it. Um, I just, I love... I love being the center of attention. <laughs> um, no, I just, I really, I mean, we built that stage, and I'm like, I'm going to use it. Like, last year, I didn't use it at all. Like, I got up there, like, once or twice. But this year, I'm like, I'm going to get on that stage. Like, and I'll just get up there, and I'll do some contorting for pictures and hang out up there. And I like to dance around, too. Sorry, I love dancing. <laughs> um, you got a good jam on, I'm going to dance. Uh, but... I just, swinging her python Yeah, around. swinging my python around. <laughs> Watch out, y'all. The um, windmill. Yeah, I, I love it. I, I just love contorting and making my body be in pain, but for fun stuff. So Yeah, I love yeah. the bendy, twisty stuff. Yeah. Uh, funnily enough, uh, speaking of the python, <laughs> Michelle, Your said, mother? Michelle said, if hers is bigger than yours, I'm not coming. <laughs> <laughs> Laugh my fucking ass off. <laughs> coming to you. Dirty ass people. <laughs> So. And she's like, read that out loud, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> well, there it is. <laughs> there it is. Perfect. And, and my daughter said she's getting me the uh, BFF bracelets. Oh, oh God, yay. yeah. So, Thank exciting. you, daughter. <laughs> Thanks, daughter. <laughs> Make sure you get it made out of, like, some kind of bone. Yeah. yeah. But, like, fake. Don't, don't use animal products for, yes, please. for, for cosmetics. <laughs> um, so this is kind of a cliche question, but I have to ask it anyway. It's a shared question. What is your favorite thing about playing your individual characters? Start with Joshua this time. My favorite thing about playing my individual characters. Ah, uh, just what's the, just his his zaniness. I mean, it's it's his energy that I like. Um, the the fact that he he is intelligent enough to, you know. Even the biggest, baddest person that comes through there, he is not afraid of you because he is a, he is a professor. He is a scientist. He can kill you with his pinky. Cattle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I will <laughs> slaughter you like cattle. That's <laughs> all you are. You're just animals for my torturing pleasure. <laughs> and uh, I mean that that the 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 ability to improv. That's my that really is yeah. it for me. Oh, I yeah. just I, I I get into it and I can't. I, I just love it. I, I caught myself on the way home, driving home, smiling like the math professor. I'm like, no, you're out of character now. Stop it. Go to sleep. You're <laughs> never out of character. <laughs> Improv is something that I was really like nervous to do. When you told me I was changing yeah. from a... Uh, uh, Oven victim uh-huh. to malice. I saw. I saw it in you. I was like, and she can do this. Now I love it. Like exactly. I, it's like crack. Better. Exactly. You're scared yeah. at first, and then you got. Oh yeah. Do it. You do it, and then you're high for like a few a few hours, and then you go home, and you're like sad, and then it, like the week goes by, and then you're back again. It's just like another like shoot up. It's the bomb. Ah <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, hard drug analogy. Yeah. Sounds you're sounds welcome. Bizarre. Thank you. <laughs> love it. <laughs> it's okay. I referenced my heroin movie earlier. Okay, so, so yeah. we're good. Uh, what's your favorite thing about playing Lilith? Yeah. <laughs> me too. Um, <laughs> Whatever you're doing over there, me yeah, too. <laughs> uh, I guess because IRL, I'm not really, I mean, I am crazy, but like I can be more crazy with her. And she's just out of the box and insane. She can do whatever she wants. And uh, me as a person, I get a lot of inspiration from Lilith and she helps me become a better, better person and more outgoing um, more free, more not, non like super scared of yeah. being judged of who I am and everything. So, she always helps me come out of my box. So that's what I like about her the most. And she's cool. And I'm stalling so she can come <laughs> back and talk on the radio. So, how's everyone doing today? Is this a good show? Hey. Enjoy I'm it. back. I hope there everybody's was enjoying. This. Some, uh, <laughs> thank you for continuing to talk. Well, and giving me, no, like genuinely, dead air is way worse than talking to people because people will leave dead air, but they're not going to leave <laughs> Cinema Bazaar for anything. Of course, they not. love us. Um, so piggybacking on the favorite things. <laughs> well, that's what you get for texting me. <laughs> I just said read it, not out loud. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so, piggybacking on the last question, this is going to be another shared one. What is challenging about playing your character? Mm. We can start with Allie this time because we started with Josh last oh. time. Um, challenging. Uh, probably because she pushes me way too hard than I actually should be pushing myself. Um, as in, like, physical pain. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, that's probably the most challenging is that she's very physically active and moving constantly constantly i need to get like a fitbit just to see like how much i've moved a night but um yeah it's mostly physical for me it's scary 
Yeah. A scary Fitbit. Yes. Just put it on your ankle Fitbit. or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But that's it because, like I said, contorting. And then I, I usually go through scenes and check on actors and see how everyone's doing. And I'll get on the ground, start crawling out to people, and end up with, like, 17,000 bruises the next day. But it's all good and fun. Like, I love it. I wouldn't change it for the world. Right on. What's most challenging, challenging for, I would say the same thing uh, my, Physical, yeah. it, it, he is so high energy mm-hmm. and when I say sprint I have to the hallway is at least I would say 40 yards from the end one the end of the hallway where I scare them to get back outside to get the next group is about 40 yards and I do that every group <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah so I feel like I'm an athlete trying to yeah. <laughs> trying to get True ready for the then. football season and I mean we rotate we put groups in up front some nights when it's like busy, we'll do it every minute and thirty seconds. So mm-hmm. you gotta in that minute thirty, you gotta scare somebody, run that forty yards, scare somebody again, run that forty yards back, and scare somebody again, start it over. Yes, all it, while telling a story. Yes, all, yeah. all, all <laughs> in that thirty seconds trying to get out you know, who you are and what yeah. you're doing. And and I even run when, when I when I go out and I greet the customer and everything. I'll run back inside. I'll shoot back in, and you guys have seen it when you've came through. I don't know if you have or not. I haven't come through Extinction yet. But I'll run back in and dive through my door, you know. And so that's an extra bit of running, and oh. that's really been the hardest thing is, is is the endurance by the end of the night. Oh, yeah. I usually drink, like, two monsters in order to stay fully awake the whole time. I, I, yeah. It even brought me out of character, and it, it bothered me. I, I, I fell out of character, and I said, y'all. I was like, oh, I, I, for one sentence, it was it was southern as hell. And I was, it, it just it ruined the whole thing. And, yeah. And uh, uh, the, but that's that's been challenging. And but I but it's a good thing too. This this is the hardest acting job I've ever had. But it's the, fun, also the funnest. Best. Yes, it's the funnest one I've ever had mm-hmm. too. So this is an individual question. We're saying on Josh for this one. Uh, this is a long winded question because I wrote this in a rush. So, the archetype of the mad scientist is an iconic one, going back famously to 1818 to Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, and surely even farther than that. How do you take that archetype and create something original for the haunt? Like you talked about earlier, taking inspiration from like Doc Brown and Victor Frankenstein. How do you take these inspirations without stealing from them? How do you make something original? And something that stands out from the typical <clears throat> mad professor. Well, that that comes down to your preparation um, as an actor. Uh, you you basically st- when I say study these people, like you watch Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, you watch Young Frankenstein, Gene Wilder. Oh man, love another it. one I pulled off of. And roll, 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 and say hey. <laughs> roll, 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 and say hey. <laughs> Luca. <laughs> right, I'll have to do some more of that in a little bit. So but good. That's some of my favorite. But um, you basically you watch them and and you see their body movements. You study their their even everything down to the way they blink, mm-hmm. the way they smile, the way they their every word that comes out of their mouth. And then you try not to do those things. Mm-hmm. You know, try to do something different. And I think the melding of the characters too helps that. Because once you put the two characters together, you're not exactly stealing from them, right? You know, and uh, so so it's a balancing act, kind of sorta. But um, play just just it's just doing it, just practice, and that's that's helped. I mean, don't get me wrong; I'm sure there's some stuff I do that if you watch the Frankenstein, or especially if you watch. Uh, uh, Young Frankenstein, that's mm-hmm. one of my favorite movies. But uh, uh, you, you may catch it, you know. Even the name, that's that's why I, I, I started out with a name for him. But it, it, his name was uh, was uh, Professor Fornicus. Okay, see, you get a giggle. Every time <laughs> Every time I say it, people's like, oh, he likes to fuck. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, well, that doesn't work. So then I, then I, like, I stole from South Park. I was like, he's, he's Professor Chaos because his mind is in chaos. It's the first time I told a customer that, they're like, oh, South Park, I uh, couldn't be original. Huh? And so I hate that. That's what I want to be original. So mm-hmm. I just said, I'm the mad professor. That's all you need to know. So and I, I, I think it, like... I didn't mean to interrupt you oh, no. then, but I think it sort of lends to your character. He's been brainwashed, so he may yes. not know his name. Yeah. And that sort of sense of leaving things open-ended 
leave it like there's room for scares because uh, the audience will put in their own yeah their you know, imagination kind of goes with it of that character yeah. um, so I'm gonna skip a couple of the middle questions because we sort of already answered them in past answers mm -hmm. and just for the sake of time because we are kind of like you know 13 minutes over the end of my thing but it's okay Whoops. people are sticking with us probably Let's I hope see. so. Yeah, people are sticking with us, so that's awesome. Um, what's your favorite memory from Haunt Seasons past? This is a shared question. We hmm. can start with Allie on this one. Oh, shared memory. Favorite memory. Oh, man. Um, probably would be uh, the very first time I went on the Midway to go and act, because... That changed everything because I had to come up with something. I had to come up with a voice. I had to interact with people. I didn't have to stay in a box the whole night and yell. Uh, that was the easy part. I had to actually go out and act more and talk to more people to get me out of my shell, which helps me a lot. The haunt broke me out of my shell an insane amount. Uh, oh, yeah, dude. Um, before, before I worked at the haunt, I hated talking to people. I was, like, shy. I didn't want to do anything. And my friend Sarah, she was like, hey, do you want to come work? And I've always been into special effects makeup. So at first, I just wanted to do special effects makeup. And then he was like, so would you want to act? Or and I'm like, I don't really want to, but if I have to, I will, I guess. And then I did my scream. And then he told me I had, like, the best scream that he's ever heard. And I was like, sick, that's cool. And that pumped me up. And I met so many insane, cool people throughout, like, through the haunt. So actually, I'm going to change my answer. That's probably, that's probably my favorite memory is like getting started and meeting people, because um, I've networked and I've I've helped out with movies. I've done stuff um, like with film. I might be doing a 24 uh, hour film project coming up soon, helping up with makeup because of the haunt. I've done stuff with photography. Um, it's insane the amount of things I went to Trans World, which y'all who don't know, it's like a haunt convention. I've met. Famous people that worked at haunted attractions like Alan Hobbs were best friends. He's a pretty cool dude, and it's insane the the crazy the people I've met through this. It's awesome. That was very long, but that was yes. great. <laughs> Made my little heart grow <laughs> three <laughs> times <laughs> its size. <laughs> it's Josh, funny. top that. <laughs> yeah, good luck, man. Society likes it long. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm dirty. I can't help it. It's okay. Um. I will see, this is my first haunt, actually. Like I said before, I've never done anything horror-related. Right. <laughs> um, so my answer can be the my favorite thing about this haunt is was the audition. Really? That, that was fun. I mean, awesome. Really I was. like hearing that because I was like, I don't know <clears throat> what the hell to do. <laughs> I was like, i got to look professional, so I'm going to watch some videos and do something. Yeah, I mean, I I, show, I showed up in swim trunks and sandals. He did. I forgot about that. <laughs> and and she's making me dance like a ballerina. I did. She, no, you know, that got hit by a bus. Yeah, digging a grave. <laughs> I'm digging a grave first, dancing like a ballerina the whole time. So I'm mm -hmm. flipping the, the, the. It was a sight. <laughs> yes, all all kinds of pretty, and then all of a sudden I get hit by a truck, mm -hmm. or was it a bus? It was a bus, wasn't it? Yep. And and I mean, it was just the, that whole part was was very that was the most interesting audition I've ever had uh, as far as what was asked of me. Most of the auditions I've went to, they, they want you to prepare yeah. a monologue. I'm yeah. like, I don't want to do that. That's not fun. And I'm like, what can I do to like push people so I can see how crazy they can be? So ballerina yeah, it, getting hit by a school bus, it is. And it, it was right in my wheelhouse. It was yeah. it was improv. I'm Another like, one yes. I made people do is like, you're a champion boxer and there's chihuahuas biting your ankle. Oh, I did that one. I kicked him <laughs> out of the park. <laughs> yeah, she did awesome too. Uh, but but this is actually, I mean, I'm sitting here at a radio station right, uh, right now, you know. I mean, it's mm -hmm. opening up. I've, I've met cool people <laughs> yeah. that, that, you know, I work in the business and, and it may open up opportunities. Yes, awesome. I'm talking about <laughs> you, Ashton. Yes, <laughs> you, you, hopefully this will this will open up some things for me because uh, I want to pursue acting as a as a career and I'll, I've always wanted to. And, yeah. And this feels like uh, I'm I'm finally getting in there. And, you know, even if it's just a small step, it's mm -hmm. something. Right on. So I'm gonna switch over to Allie for her last uh, individual question. Here it comes. So it's, about, it's about the snake. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> so he, he's new this year. He is. Where did he come from? Target. No. <laughs> <laughs> the depths of hell. 
He's actually my son. <laughs> um, his name is Leviathan. Uh, yeah, he... I was like, I need something. I'm too boring. I want something to play with and to have. And I'm like, I love snakes. I want a real snake eventually. But I'm like, a skeleton snake will do for now. And I went and I got Leviathan. And that's Lila's best friend. He hangs out with me, wraps around my neck. He's he's my bud. Um, there's not much of a story behind him. I need to I need to start creating something. But I call him my son. So... <laughs> He's my child, Leviathan. Do people react poorly since being afraid of snakes is so common? Um, sometimes there's been a few that I've seen that are like, is that a snake? And like, yeah, it's my son, Leviathan. And like a lot of people are like chill with it because it's not a real one. But I wish I had a real one because <laughs> that would get better reactions. But so it's fine for now. There's a terrarium right outside there the thing. There is. It's an empty terrarium. There like used to, say, to be a snake in there. I like to tell people there's a snake in there because it's too dark for them to see. <laughs> like, what are we scared <laughs> of over awesome. here? And they're like, I really don't like snakes. I'm like, white boy, don't like snakes. I'll be damned. Well, don't look behind you. <laughs> don't look in there. <laughs> don't look behind you. Oh, I love it. I'm, oh. I'm, I'm going to have You're you. You're gunning yeah. for her. I'm, I told you every time I get a chance. Well, you just won't hear her anymore. I'll just avoid you <laughs> for the rest of my life. <laughs> and this is the last uh, individual question for Josh, and then we'll end it with a shared question. How did you settle on an accent for your character? I have to ask. How did on, I... on the on the subject of accents, how did you, with such a wheelhouse, like you're able to do every accent I can come up with, basically on command, how did you settle? Like, how did you find the voice of I, your mad professor? The, the, it was, I believe, our maybe second day of training. Um, when, when they, uh, Ryan asked us to, to sit down and come up with our character and they were going to walk around and talk to us. Mm -hmm. And that was the day I found out that I was going to be the mad professor. Mm -hmm. So I hadn't even had a chance to, to really think about it much because right after I found out, we went into to our little training exercises and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I, I say little, but, you know, the, they're actually really good exercises. Um, I like hearing that, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they, they push your body. Yeah, they do. Yeah. Um, but uh, so I'm sitting there. He's like, you got about a minute, 30 seconds or a minute, and we're going to come around and we're going to ask you about your character and stuff. And, and uh, I was with a group of two other people, and one of the girls just kind of went off and did her own little thing. But uh, Haley was the other one. Mm -hmm. And uh, she plays Precious, by the way. <laughs> I love hearing that. When I walk around, I hear you go, Precious. <laughs> that makes me so happy. And... And so, uh, you know, I had met her right then, and and so I'm I'm sitting there thinking, I'm like, okay, the doctor, mad mad professor, he his master is pissed at him because he doesn't have enough human beings. So okay, so he's frantic. Okay, so he's gonna he's got high energy. Okay, so I I kind of was just sitting there thinking to myself, and when I opened my mouth, that's what came out. Right. And I kept it and just kind of evolved it after you know researching and. And everything it was a little bit more rough in the beginning but when they came around i wouldn't even uh, allow them to ask me any questions uh, and i even talked to haley i was like we're going to surround them and we're going to circle them when i'm in front of them you're behind them and you, you i want you pointing out stuff about them that's going to help my experiments <laughs> <laughs> and i even told damon i asked him a question i walked behind him he was staring at the ground i was like why are you staying at the ground there's nothing down there that's of any importance and by that time i'd gotten around in front and he started to talk i said no don't speak you're going to ruin it with your stupidity <laughs> perfect and David. yeah it just it just came out and uh and damon he couldn't help but giggle man I, <laughs> so good but uh I just held on to it. It just, when it happens natural, might as yeah. well, why change it? Yeah. Okay. Awesome. So I changed my mind about the shared question because we sort of already went over it in the memories ha -ha. and, you know, oh. super prepared. But, uh, so I'm going to end this with a giveaway. Ooh. Ooh. Do you want to know what the giveaway has? Yes. Do you want to know what I'm the dying. giveaway has? in it yeah, so, uh, it's a uh, small one it's gonna be anticlimactic but i'm for klimt what is in it <laughs> so how about i tell you what you gotta do first mm. and then we'll do it i was originally mm -hmm. gonna do a call in but oh. since we've had some issues with the station phone and we're also <laughs> kind of late 
Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a Facebook thing, which was sort of my original idea, and then I moved to the call, and now we're going back to the Facebook because everybody who has, everybody who's listening has access to the internet, and so everybody can do this. Mm-hmm. Uh, find a picture of your favorite character from Lake Hickory Haunts. If you post a picture of me, you win. Um, <laughs> you find a picture of a character from Lake Hickory Haunts, your favorite, or a screenshot, poster, fan art, something from your favorite movie to watch on or around Halloween. Post it on the Cinema Bazaar Facebook page, and you will win. If you are the first one to do this, you will win a printout poster from Lake Hickory Haunts and a parking pass. Ooh. And possibly, maybe, just maybe, a special Malice poster Ooh. that's being made this week. So you'll get a copy of my poster, you'll get a schedule poster from Lake Hickory Haunts, and you'll get a parking pass so you can park your car for free. Free parking! Because nothing is more scary than parking (laughs) fees, especially ones that are like cash only, which Mm -hmm. ours is. Mm -hmm. You don't have to worry about that if you post a picture of your favorite Lake Hickory Haunts character, me, or your favorite Halloween movie. True that. So do that. I'm going to close this out. Uh, any parting comments before I close it out? And I'll be posting the podcast of this ASAP. Yes. Um, if you order online for your tickets, they're cheaper, PSA. So if showing up at the Lake Hickory Haunt site online, I believe they're $23. So they're a little cheaper. Um, keep in mind, it's like an hour-long haunt when you're walking through. So you're getting your money's worth. It's a it's a pretty good deal for a long haunt. Um yeah, that's that's basically bring some money. We've got some awesome midway games too to play. I was about to say, not to mention got, access to the midway. Yeah, we have music definitely. going. We have midway games. Music, we have an escape fire, room. Fire, escape room, Monster dizzy Mart. darts. It's insane. All Food. kinds of concessions. Stuff. Food. Yeah, so it's, you get to hang out with me. Definitely, it's a fun time. So come on out and see us. Take some pictures. Tell your friends. All that good stuff. If you're wanting Leave to act at Lake Hickory Haunts, that's one too. If you're wanting to act at Lake Hickory Haunts. Um, go ahead. You can message me through my Facebook page, Allison Markintel, and I'll hook you up and you can come and act at Lake Hickory Haunts. Join awesome. the fun. Any parting comments? I was going to do a little... Pirate s- voice only. Uh, pirate voice only? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I- I'm going to do Benjamin's pirate voice. There then. you go. Yes. Benji. Um, I was going to do... <laughs> A little skit from uh, he's Scottish. What are you talking? Yeah, about? He, no, this, he's he's yeah. Scottish. Oh, have, have you not heard Benjamin's voice? No, really. You know, he's kind of like this, but he's a little deeper. He's like, is this oh, yeah. Shrek? <laughs> <laughs> Stay Shrek away from only. me, donkey. <laughs> Shrek only. <laughs> Shrek only. Yeah. <laughs> We're changing it, Shrek. <laughs> uh, I'm like onions. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Oh, 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 you mean they stink? No. Oh, you mean they, you leave them out in the sun, they, they grow little brown hairs. I can't do this. <laughs> She's dying, by the way. Yeah, she, She's kind of choking on her teeth right now. <laughs> he's, he's I thought for sure a, that I was going to throw that. <laughs> Not at my like, it's over. It's over before it happened. <laughs> Kate. Everybody love cake. <laughs> you were going to say, oh, your God. parting comments. Parting well, my, co- my parting comments was going to be, I was going to do a little uh, a little bit from Young Frankenstein. Let's do it. Uh, Perfect. Uh, Dr. Frankenstein. Uh, no, it's pronounced Frankenstein. You're putting me on. No, I'm not. It's, it's Frankenstein. Oh, is it also Frodrick Frankenstein? <laughs> no, it's not. It's Frederick Frankenstein. Oh, yeah. I see. Oh, so you must be Igor. No, it's pronounced Igor. <laughs> oh, they said it was Igor. Well, they were wrong then, weren't they? <laughs> Perfect. But, uh, yeah, come and see The Mad Professor and see more acting, more of my acting skills, Allie's acting skills, Ashton's acting skills, yeah. and uh, you will not be disappointed. Um, yes, yeah, she, she just... Join us. Yes, please join us in, in, in our, in our us, little cattle. band of horror <laughs> cattle. <laughs> All right, Awesome. Way to go for this extra long episode of Cinema Bazaar, worth every minute. I will be editing this podcast or giving it to my potential editor, Jake Morley, if you're listening. Boo, I need you to edit this. <laughs> and uh, posting it as soon as possible so you can share it with your friends and do all kinds of stuff. I look forward to logging on to Facebook in a few minutes and seeing who won the prize. Just a reminder, if you want to win the prize, post a picture of your favorite Halloween movie, movie to watch on Halloween, not necessarily the Halloween franchise or your favorite Lake Hickory Haunts character. 
My it's name me. is Ashton Helton. I have Allie and Joshua in the, in the studio. And Megan. Shouldn't say too much. <laughs> but it's okay. I still have her. I still love her. Yeah, I'm going to part. Bye, Megan. Everyone say bye, Megan. Bye, Megan. Bye, Megan. <laughs> Hello, cattle. It's opening night here at Lake Hickory Haunts. Won't you come see the mad professor? Perhaps you'll be one of my centerpieces. Or I'll just put you into pieces. 